Three weeks ago, I left for the UK and drove to Iceland in my van that you can see there. Since leaving home, we have clocked 2,000 500 kilometers. Now my trip is coming to an end and I need to drive back home and it's going to be at least another 1,500 kilometers. Now we have really put this van to the test. She's a 2002 Mitsubishi Delica. We've been on many, many miles of dirt roads. We've been through river crossings. We've had washboard tracks that have just been horrendous and she's taken a few knocks or a few things that have come up shall we say, whilst driving this past two and a half thousand kilometers. Minor things such as the rear view camera is hanging off. The tailgate uh, doesn't, doesn't always shut properly. You've got to, really got to uh, slam it to shut. <laughs> Moving inside the van, uh, a lot of these handles just seem to have rattled themselves loose. A few, few screws need tightening there, I think. Although my interior van build has held up well, unfortunately, the rear cupboard is completely rattled loose, so that'll need reattaching. This cupboard door here, this one, it doesn't open. <laughs> God, you gotta really, uh, you gotta really pull on it and then, uh, then it opens. Most notably is the damage that the exhaust has taken. Uh, jump in the van. Uh, so this van's usually nice and quiet, but as we start the engine, just listen to this. Yeah, that, that's not normal. Yeah, <laughs> it's knackered. But other than those minor things, she's running beautifully. The oil is still clean and still full. So yeah, we're all good, but we still have, as I've mentioned, a long way to go. So I am currently parked up on the south coast of Iceland and I have to drive about 280 kilometers to Seydisfjorda, which is where I'm gonna get the ferry back to Denmark. And then from Denmark, I have approximately 24 hours, there or thereabouts, to drive all the way from the tip of Denmark to Amsterdam, where I'm gonna get the ferry to Newcastle. That's gonna be a long, hard drive, and if there are any delays with the ferry from Iceland to Denmark, and I'm gonna miss my connection from Amsterdam to Newcastle. Now I've got one night in Europe to park up somewhere and by my calculations, that's gonna to have to be Germany. Now, of course, this is a photography channel and I'm not just gonna put my camera away when it's time to go home. The whole beauty of photography is that it's spontaneous. You see things, you react, you're constantly looking for those perfect images. So I think there's gonna be photography along the way. Now, when I got the ferry to Iceland from Denmark, we sailed via the Faroe Islands, which I was so excited for photographing because it should be one of the most beautiful kind of entrances and exits on a ship that you can do, but it was completely socked in, couldn't see a thing, so I'm excited for for that second chance to shoot the Faroe Islands from the ship. So there we go, there are lots of unknowns ahead. Will we get some beautiful light and photography on the way from here to Sadis Fjordo? Will the ferry be on time and will I make my connection back to the UK? Will I be able to find a park up in Germany? Will I actually be able to see the Faroe Islands as we sail in and out? And the biggest question mark of all, will the van make it? She's been amazing. She's barely put a foot wrong and to be fair the exhaust was probably my fault driving too hard on rough roads ah it's gonna be a good journey Quick fuel stop. Hopefully this will be the last time I fill up in Iceland. That's a nice thought. Geezer are staring at me. Uh, talking to yourself while filling up petrol. Oh, right. I've arrived in Seydisfjorda well ahead of time. My ferry doesn't sail until tomorrow. I've made my way east much quicker than I thought I was gonna. So I can have a hang around here for a day and just be in the rain miserable. Or there's a location about two and a half hours away that I really wanted to visit, but it's in the north. And my original route, which was supposed to go north, I went south. And I figured, well, let's go there. 
Oh, hang on. <laughs> I've not put it into the blooming Google Maps. I don't know where I'm going. Uh, I'm all over the place. I've been thrown. Car up my rear. God, oh, they're impatient. I was doing the speed limit as well. The car couldn't get past me fast enough. Bear with while I <laughs> get myself organized. Oh God. Right, directions. Two and a half hours north. It's gonna be well worth it. And I've literally got nothing else to do. Oh, it's still cringy every time I accelerate away. It's so loud. Oh, for flip's sake, I'm going the wrong way. I swear I just checked the map and this was correct. All right, we're doing a Yui. Doing a Yui for crying out loud. Ah. Oh. Well, right. I have to stop. This place is just incredible. The past few miles has been beautiful. I mean, it's been bleak and, and barren, but I don't know. It's just something about it. Oh, God, God. minimalist heaven, man. I'm going to grab a quick shot. Oh, it's cold. Oh, that was a nice impromptu stop. Uh, where's my keys? Man, this, this whole area that I've just driven through is right up my street. But we must continue on to the geothermal area. Ah, as planned. So what I'm photographing are these giant bubbles, these silver bubbles that have just appeared. They don't look real. They look like they're made of glass. Tricky to photograph because of the steam and they're moving, so I need a fast shutter speed, but I want to maintain the depth of field. So I've upped my ISO so I can get a faster shutter speed at F8, F9 maybe. But this looks great, totally abstract. I just need, the, the, the steam is diffusing everything too much. So I wait for a break in the, in the steam and then we'll get a much crisper image. Like now's quite good. The wind seems to be blowing this way a bit. Fantastic, totally abstract. Just, just looks like it's a macro shot in a science lab. Very cool. All right, I think we've got it. I think we've got the first shot. Well, that was a lot of fun. I don't know if I got any images or not. I was just kind of shooting everything, which isn't typically like me, but I was just, I got lost in it and I absolutely loved it. All right, oh, keys. There they are. All right. Man, I can't see a thing. Uh. <laughs> Oh, I'm lost. Maybe I should have used my own map. It's because, because of the mist and fog. <laughs> Can't see anything. All right, yes. This way. <laughs> I 
And we have arrived in Seydersfjorda at a campsite right in the town centre next to the ferry terminal. I'm tired, I'm hungry and I need to just chill out. Right, well, I am settling in for the evening. You can probably hear it. I've got chicken cooking. I've got some pita bread, bit of salad, bit of avocado, lots of chili sauce and mayonnaise. I'm just gonna feast out, kick back, do very little this evening, and I will catch up with you in the morning when we get the ferry back to Denmark. And I'll, yeah, I'll see you in the morning. All right, cheers, guys. Oh. <sighs> Good morning, everybody. Let me show you something. We have clocked 3,271 kilometers so far since leaving home, but that's not what I want to show you. Look at this. I just wanted to show you the state of my dashboard and interior since driving in Iceland. I mean, it's just absolutely filthy. And I've been watching the dust accumulate on the dashboard all week. As well as that, my house battery is almost dead. It's down to about 20%. So I've rearranged the EcoFlow Delta II and the spare battery. So they're sitting on top of each other with this big power cable and that's running the fridge and still continuing to charge all my other gear. So these things are going very well. The problem is since leaving home for the most of my three and a half, four week journey, it's been overcast. I guess that just goes to show how good the solar panel is because although most of the time it's been cloudy, it still has kept it topped up, but obviously oh, three and a half weeks of grace, guys. Uh, it can only do so much. All right, we are just making our way to the ferry terminal. Uh, destroying everybody's peace and quiet, but the campsite I stayed at is here, just there. And the check-in for the ferry terminal is only about 100 yards away, just down here. So it's a very convenient place to stay. And I tell you what, I hope, it's, uh, I hope the seas are not as rough as when I came here. And it's going to be really interesting. In fact, I'm going to put the windows down. I want to see how loud this thing is inside this steel hull. <laughs> yeah, no wonder everyone's looking at me when I drive through small towns and villages. Dear me, someone's kicking off. Must be quite a stressful job this actually, trying to organise all these people with their vehicles. I wouldn't fancy that job. Oh, easy fella. Let this guy get his bag out. Hey! Hello! You know what I mean? Flipping heck. Guy getting his bag out, so I give him a bit of space and then I get shouted at. <laughs> We are arriving in the Faroes and it's a little bit like deja vu. Once again, we are completely socked in, although not as socked in as uh, last time. There might be a moody ethereal shot or two, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's typically what you'd expect of the Faroes, I suppose. So it turns out we can actually get off the ship. I have a few hours. So we're in the Faroe Islands in Torshavn, Torshvan, Tor, it's written on the side of the ship, but I still can't pronounce it. Torshavn, yeah, the Faroe Islands. We have a walk around, not got my camera, just good to stretch my legs and get off the ship for a few minutes or a few hours really.
Oh, well, that made a, a nice change. I, I don't know, I'm not very good at being a tourist. I kind of aimlessly walk around <laughs> and just, just look at buildings and getting in people's way, but I did manage to get my, uh, my wife a gift, which was my main objective for leaving the ship. Anyway, back to the ship. Shoes. Don't scratch the cars, don't scratch the cars. The way that they pack the ferry means that if you've got a bag of any kind, there's just no way you can squeeze through the vehicles to get to your vehicle. Oh, if I was a bigger man, there'd be no chance. Oh, well, there's another Delica, another Delica with UK plates. Okay, and uh, welcome back to Denmark, everybody. Just another thousand kilometers to go, and we are as good as home. <laughs> Quick fuel stop. I'm assuming this is a lot cheaper than Icelandic petrol. <laughs> right, that's it, 50 liter tank, full. And that'll get me about 30 miles down the road. Drive on the correct side of the road. Porsche Taycan 4S in front of me. Camper van blocking the road. Oh, it's chaos. Get me out of here. Oh, people are honking. Seriously though, what are you doing? Come on, just pull into the car park. There's an entire like space, like a whole entrance into the car park and this camper van's just like blocking the way. Porsche's gonna have to mount the curb. Oh, they won't be happy about that. Nah, see, that's the great thing about having a Delica. They're so narrow. You can just squeeze by anywhere. No problem. Gosh, this might be the world's busiest roundabout. Oh dear, I can't exactly pull away quickly either. I'm going, I'm going, I'm joining. Oh, oh, oh. oh, now what's going on? Everyone's saying slow, oh, okay, there's a broken down bike, that's not good. They're telling me to move over, where am I gonna move over to? Into oncoming, blowing, passing traffic. Ah. Well, it could be worse, I could be that guy on the motorbike. At least my van's still running. Come on, to Germany. Oh dear me. Right, quick update. We are somewhere in Germany, not too far across the Danish border. Had to stop for a nap and a cup of tea. I was just so tired. It's, I didn't realize how taxing a trip like this is. I was just driving down the motorway. And I was like, oh my God, I can't keep my eyes open. So I've pulled into this uh, park up, this German services. Beautiful now, it's lovely and warm. The sun's out. It's probably gonna be a gorgeous sunset, but I'm not holding out any hopes for photography unless I can find a park up in a nice scenic rural area, maybe we'll see. But I think the main priority is get further south, further towards the Netherlands, and find somewhere safe and quiet to sleep. been a very long day. So I'm at a park up just outside of Bremen in Germany and I just went on the park for night app and picked somewhere that was a couple of kilometers off the motorway. Somewhere quiet, by a river, it looked nice. Anyway, I'm here now in this park up. It seems quite nice, there's a few vans, there's a bit of, but it sounds like someone's having a party or something, but uh, I think it's harmless enough. I, I think in the morning, in the light of day, I'll realize that I'm in quite a nice area. Anyway, for now, I've got a cold beer. Non-alcoholic beer, by the way. I, I don't know the rules in Germany, so I'm not gonna risk it. 
Now, unfortunately, we are on emergency rations. A boil in the bag, chicken tikka and rice. Now, before I tuck into this and finish my beer, I just want to thank the sponsor of today's video. Again, without sponsors, trips like this just simply wouldn't be possible. So today's sponsor is NordVPN. Now, if you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network, which basically gives you complete and utter security and privacy whilst browsing online. You can essentially tell your computer that you're somewhere else in the world. You can log onto a secure server anywhere in the world. A classic use case of that is if you're traveling overseas and you wanna watch television that is only broadcast in your home region, well, you can tell your computer that you are in your home region when in fact you're not. You're in a park up outside of Bremen in Germany. But they're very good for cyber security, especially if you use public Wi-Fi. So there's a classic thing with public Wi-Fi is that as a man in the middle attack. It basically means you log onto a cafe's Wi-Fi, which is essentially open Wi-Fi. And then if there's an unscrupulous hacker, <laughs> or anyone basically, just dodgy criminals also on that Wi-Fi network, well, they can essentially access your laptop they can they can capture and harvest all of the key and sensitive information that you're entering such as if you go onto facebook and you log in you put in your password they've got all your login details with, with a vpn it encrypts all of your data so you've got complete total online security so if you fancy giving that a go go to nordvpn.com forward slash heaton and if you sign up for two years you get four extra months Right, it's chicken tikka time. I'm gonna chill out. There's really nothing else to show or talk about. So I'll give you a look around the park up in the morning. Mm. All right, I'll see you in the morning. Oh, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, not the best park up, I'm gonna be honest. I mean, it's beautiful in the in the morning light, but I tell you what, there was a lot of comings and goings last night, and I swear to God, there was some sort of party rave thing happening. I didn't feel threatening or anything, it was just loud. I didn't settle down till about one o'clock in the morning, and even then, there was still cars coming and going early this morning, late last night. Anyway, just having a bit of a walk around, stretch my legs before we do the final leg, the final push back to Amsterdam but yeah I've got to say it's beautiful here it's just it was just rowdy all right onwards to Amsterdam oh here we go let's wake everybody up if we haven't already Ooh. so we have 237 miles to the ferry terminal and I I'm going to try and fill up with petrol for the last time. So if I fill my tank now, I should <laughs> just by the skin of my teeth get me to the ferry terminal. Because petrol's very expensive here in Germany. Um, so yes, let's see. Never mind, this is diesel only. <laughs> oh man. Ah, all right, we'll go find another petrol station. Yes, so as I was saying, about 240 miles range to one tank of fuel and about 240 miles to, uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm going in but I'm facing them the wrong way. Uh, yeah, and about 240 miles to Amsterdam. I've gone for Super E5 in the hope that it's gonna give me a tiny bit more fuel efficiency rather than E10, but, oh my God, it's expensive. It's over two euros a litre. Alrighty, that'll do it. <sighs> okay. Whoa, now, now we can go to Amsterdam. All right, we are joining the autobahn. No, we're not. We're joining the slip road next to the autobahn. Yay, Zah! Look at this rain, man. We almost had to do an emergency stop. To turn my snorkel around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when it's really heavy rain, you've got to turn your snorkel around, otherwise there's a risk that all this rain's going to get sucked up into your engine. So I'm just approaching the ferry now, and this is some interesting consumer advice if you're thinking of doing this trip or getting on this ferry. I bought the Time Warp Pass. You pay a bit more, but what it means is you don't actually have to sleep on the ferry overnight. 
you simply drive onto the ferry and then you keep driving and you come out and you're in North Shields in the UK. It's so much better than getting a cabin and sleeping for 16, you know, being on the boat for 16 hours. So there we go. The Time Warp Pass. Not bad for an extra 4.99 and a wormhole in the space-time continuum. Ladies and gentlemen, 4,359 kilometers, <sighs> and we are back home. <sighs> well done, Telly. Well done. So just before you click away to the next video, I just want to let you know that my 2024 landscape photography calendar is now available and can be ordered from my website. Each time somebody orders a calendar, it's a huge support to this channel. Thank you.